Josh, we hear a lot about machine mechanics who can't read schematics or diagnose any kind of hydraulic failures, and, and they really haven't touched any hydraulic concepts since college. Do you have any tips on how someone like that could improve their hydraulic troubleshooting ability, even if they've never sat in a single classroom to learn hydraulics? Absolutely. Uh, start by understanding two basic types of pumps. Okay. You have your constant flow and constant pressure. Mm -hmm. A constant flow system uses a fixed displacement pump. The most common type are gear and vane pumps. Mm -hmm. uh, a constant pressure system uses a variable displacement pump, uh, which is also called pressure compensated. Mm -hmm. Variable displacement pumps are typically piston pumps, but variable pumps can be vane as well. So how can you tell the difference between fixed and variable pumps? Is there a real easy way to do that? It is an easy way to do that. Okay. By the absence or presence of what looks like a little relief valve mm -hmm. uh, mounted to the pump. If there's a hex head or a socket head adjustment mm -hmm. on the pump itself, it's a constant pressure pump, okay. um, which is a variable pump. Uh, when you're establishing uh, the type of pump during machine failure, you can start by diagnosing the cause of the failure. Mm -hmm. uh, if the pump is a constant pressure, a variable displacement pump type, uh, you know that if the flow is blocked downstream from mm -hmm. the pump, the pump will stop pumping. Okay. Um, the pump could be uh, pumping still, but it may not be. Uh, if nothing on the machine is moving, uh, I would start by immediately uh, checking downstream of the pump to figure out which component is keeping the pump off stroke, okay. which means that it's no longer pumping. Uh, progressively check to see where the flow could be blocked downstream, and eventually it'll lead to your failure. That makes sense. So, so what's next? If you know that you have a constant flow pump, um, such as a gear pump, you must understand that it cannot stop pumping. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's turning, so if your electric motor is running, mm -hmm. uh, you know that there must be some flow. If you're not getting it at all, then your shaft or coupling or guts might have disintegrated mm -hmm. and the pump needs to be replaced. Um, but assuming those components are healthy, the pump is absolutely must be flowing somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, even if the machine isn't moving, so it's important to start, once again, check downstream of the pump okay. um, to see what component that the fluid is traveling through. Mm -hmm. um, you can help diagnose the, the failure from there. Um, the main system relief valve could be blocked, uh, it could be opened by contamination, directional valves could be stuck, or True. a cylinder could have leaking seals. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be surprised at how much flow can bypass the piston seals of a cylinder. Okay. Now, I know you're a big proponent of laser thermometers. Now, how, how would those help in a situation like this? Right. Everyone working on a hydraulic system should have a laser thermometer. Mm -hmm. um, if your budget allows, an infrared camera would be better, um, but you can get laser thermometers for $50 or less. Okay. Uh, when you have deduced that uh, you have flow leaking somewhere in your hydraulic system, um, that somewhere can be located by the heat it creates. Mm -hmm. uh, any cool. fluid passing through an orifice, valve component, without doing useful work is wasted 100% as heat. Mm. Um, by aiming your heat gun at a relief valve and finding 150 degrees Celsius on your display, you've just found your spot sure. of leakage. Um, you can then inspect, repair, or replace the valve. Mm -hmm. um, other common spots to check for bypass related heat, is heat issues are in cylinders. So the area where you think the piston is mm -hmm. as fluid is traveling past and uh, creating heat. Uh, you can also check proportional valves, bypass flow control mm -hmm. valves, and uh, motor housings and case drain lines as well. Okay, any other good tips maybe on the maintenance side? Uh, one more. And this applies to any hydraulic system with a case drain uh, mm -hmm. on the pumps or motors. Mm -hmm. Uh, a piston pump, for example, actually requires a given amount of fluid to maintain lubrication to operate properly. Mm -hmm. uh, the lubrication flow is also termed as leakage, sure. uh, which makes it uh, makes its way past pistons and wear plates and bearings and into the case of the pump itself. Uh, the flow then requires a very low restriction line created going directly back to the tank to prevent excessive case drain uh, um, back pressure buildup, which would damage the pump. Uh, case drain flow is a sign of pump health. Mm -hmm. uh, you want some flow, uh, but not too much flow, and it's a sign that the pump is worn out. Okay. Uh, clearances will be high, the pump will be operating inefficiently, loose tolerances could create uh, even more wear and breakage. Um, at the extreme end of pump wear, you may not be able to build pressure at all. Okay. Uh, when you're experiencing hydraulic trouble, um, such as slow operation or low pressure, um, pressure off the case drain line um, will be able to tell you if the pump is going bad. Uh, you could go to a step further and install a case drain flow meter on your piston pumps. Mm -hmm. um, observing and documenting case drain flow rates will allow you to predict when a pump failure is imminent. Okay. Uh, allowing you to replace the pump during schedule shutdown rather than waiting for a catastrophic failure uh, during hot production periods. Sure. Well, thanks for the great insight, Josh. The next time that you have a hydraulic failure in your plant, volunteer to tackle it. By challenging yourself with some hydraulic projects, you could quickly become the hydraulic go-to expert. For more videos, please check out 
www.fluidpowerworld.com.